So this morning, I happened to find myself at the residence of Daniel Macaulay, who is the board chairman of Magdan Group Companies, and he is hosting us to a Daddy's Code Hangout, and that is what is happening here. A wonderful day in the life of fathers, and we are celebrating fathers. So. Yeah, well, there are some invited guests. Yeah, there are your favorite personalities from multimedia that you're going to see. And also the five lucky winners who were chosen and voted for on all the live shows on Joy Prime. And those are people who we are going to have a wonderful time with. Well, I've seen one person who happens to be, he sits at the drive time on Joy 99.7. Lexus, how are you doing, my man? Good, how are you doing? I'm very well. I how love, you I love what you, you, it looks you. like we're in a celebration mood. I'm, of course we are celebrating fatherhood and of course these amazing fathers in the background. So, I mean, we're in good company this morning. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Yeah. Well, well it, it, it's always an experience being a father. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is for you, what is an achievement or is a challenge that you have to wake up to live that experience every day. I tell you, it's fulfillment. That's what it is for me, honestly. It's just happiness, fulfillment that you have your own baby you do know what i mean and it's just it just makes me happy with your trade and what you do you have fathered a lot of journalists first off how is it being biological children and children also in well it feels good i mean that uh, a lot of people tend to look up to you and the fact that you have children who you're responsible for who you're supposed to bring up in a way that you uh, you know, because you want them to grow and be mm -hmm. like you or responsible adults, at least. So, yeah, the feeling is good. The fact that the responsibility, mm. having to bear that responsibility is a special feeling. How do you see Father's Day? Um, here, I mean, General Father's Day, we don't get celebrated. But I, I was so happy to have joined you guys here so that people will celebrate Father's. Because without Father's, uh, there will not be any Mother's Day. <laughs> well, I like that. I like that. So, so we are the fathers indeed, and I'm glad that we are here to give our experience, things that we have done, the experiences, the up and low moments in our lives to share with other people. Because at my age, over 55, you know, at my age, if I can share that experience, then the young ones come in can emulate. Uh, from it, and that's the key reason why I chose to participate in this sharing experience. Charles, let me find out from you. It's been, I know it's been a beautiful experience. How many kids do you have? I have three. Three, three. three boys, how many girls? One boy and two lovely girls. <laughs> two lovely girls, and that is where all fathers actually put their all their eyes on. So, what would you say has been the most defining time for you as a father? I think the moment they were. Um, they appear. In other words, when you went with your wife to the delivery room, when you see them, that's nature coming out. So that's the big moment for me. And I participated in all the three kids, and indeed I was spread. So it gives me a lot of quiet moment to, in it, might see them, how they came in, the pain, and the smile in the face of my wife, you know, he was going through pain that moment, and then boom, then he starts smiling, you know, so that kind of thing, it gives me, it gives me a lot of goose pimples, you need to talk about it. Yes. So we're still here, we're having the daddy's code, and it's a beautiful thing. I mean, okay, so the morning man is also here. How can we have a breakfast without a morning man? Kujo, how you doing, bro? IB, it's wonderful to see you. I'm doing very well indeed. Yeah, and Daddy's happy Father's Day to you. Oh, bro. happy Father's Day to you too. Daddy's called Hangouts. Yes, I mean, indeed. Well, being a father is an experience words can't express, I know. How's the experience been for you? Yeah, words can't express. Wait, hold on. <laughs> how challenging has it been for you? Let me tell you, um, there's nothing I've done that is harder than being a father. Um, but there's also nothing I've done that is more fulfilling than being a father. Doc, how is it like? How is the experience of fatherhood like? Wow, I've been a father for 13 years. A lot of experience. <laughs> 13, 13 years. years. How many? Um, two. Two. Two boys. My, my mother raised three boys. Right. And it was, it, we gave her hell. Yeah. Like, literally, we gave her hell. Yes. How is it like for you? Um, it's been tough. 
um, uh, they motivate you, they inspire you all the time. Um, I was there at birth uh, for the first one. It was a Caesarean section. Uh, for the first time, I was scared being in the theater. This time, I'm not operating, but watching my wife being operated. Uh, I didn't want to be there again. <laughs> so I understand all the men who don't want to be there at birth, so that we don't want to be there. It's too scary a thought watching your wife go through all of that uh, pain. But it's also very exciting at the same time. Unfortunately, I couldn't be around for the second one. I was away um, training um, outside. But since they've been around, it's been a joy to grow. Um, the first time I saw them crawl, first time you see them stand, first time you see them take steps, first time you, you hear them say mama or dada, it's all very, very, very um, inspiring. And th these are memories that you can't exchange for, for, for anything else. We are still having a chat with some of the fathers we have. Please join me here. And your name is? My name is Kweku. How many kids you have? I have two. Boys or boy and a girl? Boy and a girl. Boy and a girl. Yeah, in that one. How is the mix like? It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> I kid you not. It's crazy. It's crazy. Who has been the difficult one, the boy or the girl? They both have been difficult at different times. You know, um, so because they are of different gender, you are a bit careful what to do, what impressions to make. Else you would handle the boy a different way. And if you try to apply same or different to the girl, and the boy is like, Daddy, why did why did you do this for me? I'm doing this for my sister. And same for the girl also. So it's been it's been a it's been a, a very difficult mix, but it's been fun. And on that note, I'll be going for a quick breather. But my colleague Kojo, the morning man, is standing by to take over from here because we just need to we just need to have a break for me so that I can go and join this. But don't forget that it's Father's Day and we're live on Joy Prime, the only channel that gives you the ultimate experience. From the start, you were first. He loves you. Meet Selassie. He has four brothers and five sisters. He grew up in a house just like this. And because he has a good father, his talent is being displayed today. Selassie learned how to play the piano just by watching YouTube videos. While some fathers might be forcing their children to watch junk, his father made him explore his talent. And today we're enjoying the wonderful product of his father's hard work and of course Selassie's own skill and ability. We are in a beautiful place today and you're very welcome to join us on this wonderful journey to celebrate fathers. Happy Father's Day. My name is Kojo Yangson and today we are being hosted by one of the greatest fathers in our nation with 10 children. Dr. Daniel Macaulay is a giant of industry and as you look around his luxurious home uh, here called the Eagles you can tell that so we're here to explore and enjoy the wonderful example that he sets and he's going to have a conversation with us alongside some other illustrious Ghanaian fathers now everywhere I look I see great fathers in fact before I introduce anyone, let's give ourselves a round of applause. So here we are at the Eagles. This is Dr. Daniel Macaulay's nest. Because he is indeed an eagle, he soars high, sets a great example, and his good work influences others. Today, he's hosting us all on Father's Day so that we can explore the concept of being a great father. Because, of course, our campaign this year on Father's Day is called the Real Daddy Code. We're going to hear Dr. Daniel Macaulay's Real Daddy Code. 
He'll introduce you to two of his friends, an amazing fathers. They'll tell us their code as well. We'll have a conversation uh, with some of our listeners and viewers, some of the people who have never left our side as we've brought you the very best of entertainment on Joy Prime, the very best of information and education on Joy FM. These are the people who have made what we do possible. Some of the great listeners who won the competition to be here with us on this great Real Daddy Hangout. This is Kay. You'll hear more from Kay shortly. He's here with a few others uh, who have all uh, distinguished themselves by winning this competition. Now, I want to introduce you to those who will be leading the conversation today. So if you're ready with your applause, let's say a great Happy Father's Day with a round of applause to Senor Hossi. Thank you. Senor is the CEO of the Chamber of Bulk Oil Distributors. Uh, so he's one of the leading Ghanaians in the conversation about fuel and, of course, how it impacts all of us here in this country. We're very happy to have you. Happy Father's Day, Senor. Same to you. If you have another round of applause in you, let's have it for Charles Mensah. Uh, Charles is a great and old friend of joy. Uh, he's a voice you've heard so many times because he's a consultant who is brilliant at teaching young men and women how best to manage their finances, how well to start a business, uh, just how to be financially effective, which is a very important role that fathers are expected to play. So once again, with that applause, Let's say a warm welcome and happy Father's Day to Charles Menza. And now the eagle himself. Numwe. I, I learned that gown for this event. Dr. Daniel Macaulay used to sell kerosene in Labadi. He graduated to Booth Root, and for most, that was the best they expected from him, but he had other ideas. Today, he's a captain of industry. He runs the biggest shipping company anywhere you turn. He's also the CEO of Songo Salt, Electrochem. And beyond this, Dr. Daniel Macaulay's impact and influence is felt everywhere in this country. Today, we are feeling it here on Joy Prime and on Joy News as he plays host to us, as he welcomes us into his beautiful home. So let's show our gratitude with a round of applause for our host, Dr. Daniel McCauley. Now at Joy, we have great fathers. We'll introduce you to a bunch of them. In fact, I can see them all scattered around here. Let's give it up for Israel Lai. Easy. <laughs> you see the man sitting next to Israel? That's the drive doctor. You listen to him on Thursdays, right? On Wednesdays, on drive time on joy. Let's give him a round of applause. When he came to us, his name was Winston. We decided that his name is Churchill. Let's give it up to, for Winston Amwa. Winston, of course, the co-host of the Super Morning Show. At night when you can't sleep and you switch on your radio and you are hoping that there will be something on Joy to put you to sleep, this man makes it impossible for you to doze off. George Quay. <laughs> And I won't even try to introduce you to the one you already know. Lexis Bill, everyone. <laughs> now, on this channel, there are some authoritative voices, some faces that you see and you know you're about to be educated. One of them is Mr. Ben Bako, Ibrahim Ben Bako. We're going to meet many more of the people who are gathered here today as the program goes on. But right now, I'm going to hand you over to a man who has love for sports. A man who is a consummate absu, a quintessential gentleman. 
ladies and gentlemen, Nathaniel Atto. All right, quick question. I was asking myself whether I was supposed to start talking after that or something. Um, you know, uh, yeah, Koji Yangson, great chap. Uh, one good turn deserves another. Put your hands together for, you know. And you know, um, you know, recently Uncle Ebo White was asking that Koji Yangson hits the cut, what, the, you know, the runway because, you know, have you, have you, have you taken a good look, you know? Uh, Kwa Kwa, Mr. Kwadisin is the man behind the camera. So many years of experience. You want to put your hands together for him. You know, a lot of people behind the scenes. So we're glad to be in your company. And uh, wow, Sunday, June 19, 2022. I never, ever expected today to come for the very simple reason that we always gather and celebrate the mothers. And this time, the mothers have decided that, look, you know what? You take a break, sit back, and let's do this for you. So it's a good time, and it's a great time uh, you know, a good time to be in the company of so many fathers who've had wonderful experiences so far and have a lot to share with us as well. So come along with us on this beautiful journey as we look forward to it. You know, just as Kojo said earlier, we have, uh, you know, different generations of fathers. I belong, I guess, maybe to the youngest generation. I don't use football age, by the way. Um, Charlie, Abaji, what be your football age? Why did they run? 11. Oh, Charlie. Uh, yeah, I can tell, I can tell, you know. He never grew any taller after Abuaji, so he's still Abuaji. Anyway, so, you know, it's a wonderful time, and, uh, you know, sometimes you have interactions with people, and they give you different perspectives to life, and that's what we want to do as we share with the rest of the world. And remember, we're on Channel 281 on your DSTV, and uh, Joy Prime always brings you big conversations such as these. All right, let's begin uh, right here. So, um, the three gentlemen here are people I know, I've known for so many years. I mean, combined, I'm sure I can't calculate very well. We share, you know, wonderful times professionally on the social level and at the family level as well. Um, let's begin with our host, Dr. Macaulay. Uh, you, you, have, you have quite a large number, you know, um, relatively. And one would wonder, how do you do the coordination of, you know, looking and checking the progress of every child, combined with managing the enterprise as big as you do? Well, before then, I would like to congratulate Joy FM for this, because uh, we are normally ignored. <laughs> and for Joy trying to bring some recognition to fathers, I really commend this occasion. At times, I feel jealous. Yeah. I think uh, this is the first of its kind, right? And uh, keep it up. I would like to be part in next year's own, too. So um, I feel very jealous. Because I feel that uh, I do a lot for my kids. But I'm never recognized when it comes to Father's Day. But I have great kids because uh, they try to give me some sketches. They will draw something for me. <laughs> but when, to, when it comes to Mother's Day, then we have to go to the shopping mall. <laughs> 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 that is normally what happened. Um, with me, I love large family and uh, I love kids. Uh, now I have uh, only 10. Hold on, did you say only 10? Yeah. Charlie, did you hear that? He said only 10. Oh. Hey, Cheva. Yeah, now I have only 10 and I'm aspiring to have more. Uh, yeah. I don't see any disadvantage in having more children. There are more advantages in having more children. But for now, I always tell young men that the care is very important. I keep my eagle eye on each and every child I have, both academically, extracurricular activities, especially at home. I have a policy at home. You will never be my child. And jump a spoon to pick a toy, you will be disciplined. 
I consistently insist on that with my wife, that a child at home shouldn't jump a spoon or a cup lying down and pick a toy. I always also say that uh, what you, you, you don't have time to look at now or take care of it now when it comes to kids, you pay dearly for it tomorrow. So we as fathers, I believe ours is to discipline. Ours is to be there as a father figure. And father figure in every home for me is very, very important. I've introduced all my 10 kids in sports because I feel they are too, too academic intelligent. So they have to exert their energy into something. So normally, with the question, coming back to the question you have, I have a heavy schedule managing all this company, but Saturdays are for me and my kids. And one or two times during the week, I try to break off early come home and look at the academic work. Wow. So I have my eye on them. I have my eyes on them. Dr. Daniel Macaulay there. Um, let me take the thoughts of uh, Senor as well. Senor, you, you, you know, also have, you know, a lot of responsibility work-wise. And I'm focusing on what emergencies take away from your family, what the emergency you know, demands of work take away from family and the everyday demands as well. Today, you're hosting a conference. The next minute, you're traveling out of town. The next minute, you're here in this part of the country. Um, how do you pull all of it together in making sure that you have that ego eye that Dr. Daniel Macaulay was talking about? I have quite an interesting question. I sometimes wonder how I do it. But just like my mom did it, my dad did it, it's up to us to really do it. The Bible actually calls on us to um, protect and direct right our families. And as fathers, uh, biblically, we are supposed to be head of the home. Going out there to hunt, um, if I should use the hunter and gatherers um, theory, is actually intended to really protect and advance the good and cause of the family. I run six businesses of my own and an MD of two businesses I don't own, um, but I have to direct. I sit on various corporate and public boards. They will surely take your time. But your primary calling as a father is to your family. <laughs> this is something a couple of us identify with here. Yeah, uh, hobby. <laughs> Look, it's interesting that you ended on this note, and you know, you talk about wanting to create that relationship with the kids, and wanting to ensure that there is discipline, and you know, you make them, you shape them along along those lines. But whilst we go on here, just remember that. Uh, you know, the clock says that today is Father's Day, and today we're doing it differently on Joy 99.7 FM and Joy Prime, which is also on 281 on DSTV. The whole team is here, and it's an all-testosterone affair, you know, uh, <laughs> right here in Dr. Macaulay's nest. That's what he describes it as. This is the eagle uh, somewhere in the capital Accra. Now, Charles Spencer, the other day I, I, you know, I was just sitting back and watching him have a chat with his son, and uh, they were talking about who was the funkier young man back in the day. And that just struck something, that sometimes we need to create that relationship with our children to ensure that they, you know, um, they're able to have conversations with us and they're able to flow with us. Very important. How, how did you manage to pull that off? Because you see, the demographic here is, is nothing different. You sit on quite a number of boards, those I know and those I don't know, <laughs> and all of that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think, thank you very much. Um, how do I do it or how do I, you know, uh, manage these things? I think fatherhood is presence. Yeah. Presence is not physical, mm. but the feeling that father is there, my dad is there. So with my kids, I'm always present in their lives. Mm. Either a phone call, either physical. When I'm not in town, 
and I arrive, first thing I do, if they are sleeping, I go to each person's room. Tap. I have a way of tapping them, and they will see that it's me. There are particular parts that they will be sleeping, and I'll tap, and they say, and you hear them, that. Mm. That means that I'm dead. So, fatherhood is presence. Fatherhood is confidence. You see, no matter financial situation that you have, you must expose confidence. So when a kid sees you, they get that hope. Because sometimes we come home very stressed. And it would be good to distress at the entrance to your house than to go home looking all stressed and annoyed. Because what we begin to do that, and assuming they are coming for your gas, stop it, you break it. When you begin to shout, they will shy away. So they may be going through some problems that they want to chat, have a chat with you, but the posture that they just saw, they will keep it to themselves. And that's why if you're not careful, the next person at school, they will share those challenges with them. They may share with their mom, and probably throw in there, and the first thing sometimes the mom usually would do is that, don't mind your father, maybe he was annoying. And that kind of separates us. So I'm able to do it with my son, my two girls, because I'm always present. When you're around, it's not just uh, talking about hard work, it's not just talking about clothes, but you pick any topic at all. So what are you guys going to talk about today? Then you talk about it. Then you try to solve it. Where you cannot solve it, then you make effort. You see, it is those little, little things that they will inspire them. Effort, the little effort. Oh, shit, I forgot. I should have bought it. That kind of thing, they, that they made an effort. I drive them to school when they were kids at Rich Church School. I drive them to school every morning because I was then working around the ministries. So every morning, I drive them, and mommy was picking them up. Now, during the drive, you ask questions. They'll ask you questions. They'll do spelling. There's always books in the car that they'll read, and they'll chat and all those things. So when if you are lucky to have a car, try and drive them when you're in town. Drive them to work. It's a relieving moment when you're driving. They'll ask you questions. And one of the things that I picked up in the end, which helped me, is that when I'm driving and somebody crosses me, I don't shout, I don't insult. It has imbibed in the kids because they learn from you. So when somebody crosses you and you bang the stair, in 17, 18 years time, when they are 18, 19, they'll bang the same thing. Great, great stuff, great thing you've mentioned there, uh, Uncle Charles, and you know, a couple of years ago, uh, my first daughter, she was a toddler at the time, about three years old. We, uh, I have two daughters and... Uh, and uh, and Compton. You know, no, I'm not at 10. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we went to the playground and, uh, you know, she got onto this <clears throat> simulator, like a vehicle. So she gets into it and there's a, you know, there's a steering wheel and it's like a car and um, it, it runs on a rail. And then immediately she gets there, she puts the left hand on the steering wheel and puts her right hand on her ear like she's talking on her phone. And then I said, oh, my goodness. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> exactly. You know, so you're very spot on when you talk about, uh, you know, the kids watching. And that's one of my, uh, you know, personal daddy codes. We'll be coming over to our friends here to tell us about their personal daddy codes as well. Um, our children watch us, and it's, and it's amazing. They... they, they they study every single thing that we do. They observe what we do, and they, 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 they grow their values and shape their values based on that. Our children watch us in many ways. We impact their lives in many ways we don't realize. They aspire to be like us. I mean, as kids, till you become a rebel, you largely look up to your father in many ways. Your mom is always with you. It's a great thing. Mothers are awesome in the morning but you always look up to your dad. So we should be very careful the examples that we show. How do we get them there? And, and I'm, I'm towing this line because Senor mentioned one moment that, look, okay, you see your dad say this or that, but you're not necessarily supposed to say that. You are, at least you're not at that stage now, and it has to stick. 
How do we then draw that line where, you know, your kids see you in your relaxed moments with your age mates and your classmates having conversations that they are not exactly invited to, but then they still understand that this is my father, uh, you know, this is what he gets up to to have fun and everything, and this is at a certain stage of life. Um, when it is that you have friends visiting your home, um, in fact, we teach them how to serve. You yes. can't serve yeah. people with a bottle in your hand. He has to be in a plate. You teach them how to serve. It's very important. You teach them how to say thank you. You teach them how to say please. You teach them that when people are seated, you know, you don't just drop the water. Those petitions are done. When they air, the first thing you do after everybody's left, don't, don't do it in presence of the visitors. After they've left, then you say, George, this is what you should have done. Because you almost spilled the water. And then they say, oh, okay, okay, okay. Now, we have a, a code at home where speaking to the, the way one dresses and things like that. I shop for the kids. Now they shop for themselves because they are grown. But I shop for the kids. Each time I want to go out, you go into their rooms and help them select and combine. Oh, you have to match this with that. Once they begin to do that, then they themselves say, look, this one, daddy won't like it. This one, mommy won't like it. Those things, there's a feeling there. I started driving with my son because when he became of age and things like that, I started driving with him and then he learned how to drive and I'll sit in front and he would drive and they'll have the conversation. Then I introduced him to you know, my lifestyle in terms of <laughs> and, uh, you know, every evening. Forgive me, but you, you, when your son is 21, introduce him to a little bit of fun in terms of you know, small alcohol here and there and things like that and have a chat. Have a chat about the girlfriend that he's dating and all those ones. Tell him about the challenges that he's likely to face. Why am I saying this? Because one day, he will go, the first person that will introduce him to drinks. Maybe it's not the kind of drink that you would teach him. But then he comes home, he's gone, and he's locked at the door, and he's crying because some, some, a girl broke his heart. <laughs> so you must break the ice and have that serious conversation. And then when you are wrapping up the conversation, then you come to how is your result in school, the class, you know, looking at you, I think you are more of mathematics or engineering inclined. And it's that conversation that by the time you are leaving, you feel fulfilled. Two of my grown-up kids, you know, they are computer engineering and electrical engineering. It's all because of the conversation that you have with them. I'm not saying that if you don't do engineering, you can't go f far. But it's the conversation. You would see something on television. You can have a discussion with them. I've always had a problem when the mom trying to watch these kind of movies. You know what I'm talking about. And I said, look, what you watch can have influence in you. So please watch this. Because of that, we had four or five televisions in the house. So if mommy wants to watch, he goes into a room and watches. I don't really want certain things to be watched. Not because I think they are not good, but because the kids are growing. The inf it will have influence in them. In future, when they have full control, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, they're about. Yeah. They, can, they can watch whatever it is because you're not in, with them at the tertiary institution. But then let them have the basic tenets that as it grows up, because you are leading. And if you don't lead well, the followers will overtake you and then the rest of your life you'll be spending in church asking pastors to pray for your kids and all those ones. <laughs> well, if you're just joining us, we're having... A smooth conversation today, Father's Day, Sunday, uh, June 19, 2022. We're doing things differently this time, and it's Joy 99.7 FM and Joy Prime on 281 on DSTV, bringing this to you. Uh, Dr. Daniel Macaulay is our host, and we've got quite a number of fathers out here. Um, Dr. Macaulay, you, 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 you also place a lot of focus on wellness, okay? All your kids play one sport or the other. 
I saw one of them here. He was in his full jersey. I was just asking him how many goals he scored today. And he was like, he hasn't played yet. You know, uh, two of the girls are doing, in fact, three of them are very vibrant. Um, two of them I know are in the senior national team and the junior national tennis teams. They travel around and all of that. Um, how does the, the whole wellness mix come in? I mean, all the three of you are very well-groomed gentlemen who make time. When I called Senor earlier in the morning, he was like, oh, Charlie, I was just hitting the treadmill. Oh, oh time is up, eh? Charlie, okay, I'm coming. So, so how, do you, how, do you, how have you managed to make that, you know, a part of the process, the process of training, uh, you know, and how, how have you also made sure that that is a critical part of your life? Because like we say, you're always on the move. There are days when you want to beat the traffic before going to the salt mine, and because of that, you have to be up by 4 a.m. How do you manage to put all of it together? Because there are many young fathers here who aren't able to do that. We're not able to exercise. We're not able to play a sport because you have to go and it's time, you know? You have to beat the traffic. How, do you, how have you done it? Well, with me, what I don't know how to do uh, is to shop. Like uh, Charles. Charles. <laughs> Every time I end up buying the wrong sizes for my children. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my wife are always mad at me because of that. I, see. I can bring a whole suitcase home full of wrong sizes. <laughs> and uh, they can still pardon me for that. So some few years back, I decided not to shop again. I only shop when I am with them. So congratulations, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with this wellness thing, I believe that uh, sports make kids, kids sharper. No matter what you do, it's very important that you introduce your children into sports. Ghana academics always is a disappointment in the way we train the children in school. Because a child goes to school as early as 5 a.m. trying to finish the traffic, he comes home at uh, 5, at times 6, already tired. So what can you do for your child to keep him uh, physically and mentally active? I've introduced all my children into sports. My last child, is learning how to keep the post, a goalkeeper. I was in Egypt yesterday when they sent me his training pictures yesterday. Five years, he's already a goalkeeper. And he's jumping all around the place. What I have benefited in trying to let my children go through that is it makes them very sharp discipline. It gives them more endurance and more, give them more energy. My kids, by five o'clock, they're already up. You don't wake them up. So through sports, the benefit is enormous. They come home, they know when to, to train, when to learn. You don't, you don't push them anymore. And I don't, I'm not a kind of uh, person who direct, I don't direct my children that when you grow, be a doctor, be a, and there's be a journalist, but no. I'm teaching all my kids how to solve problems. I say, if you want to be a billionaire, learn how to solve problems. I remember about three weeks ago, one of my sons went to Morningstar. He's at Morningstar. Um, 12 years, he closed from school. There was no vehicle to pick him up. He called me, I was in the mines. And they say, jump into the truck truck, go to 37. <laughs> go to 37, pick another truck truck. When you get down at Legon, walk home. Or pick a taxi and get home. Grandma is at home, grandma will pay. I was there and the mother started calling me almost 100 times. The grandmother started calling me 100 times. They can't find him. Less than two hours, they saw him coming through the gate. And they asked, where have you been? I said, I walk. So why did you walk from morning, all the way from Mosul to uh, East Lagos? I said, I didn't get any vehicle. I said, why did you do that? I said, daddy told me that we should find solution to problems. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> we should find solution to problems. You but you see, 
With that, he's gone past certain stereotype. You know that walking is no more a problem. The vehicles and those things are no more danger. He's gone past that. The fact that he was able to walk home, trying to get home, finding that solution, for me, is amazing. So, let's put all the worries aside. My son, for instance, he's supposed to go to the university and say, sit at home one year. Go and start work, go and start work in my company as a security guard. He saw the trend of learning how to be disciplined. I always teach my children how to serve because they are sports person. All of them play tennis. And uh, the boys play football. He started work in my company as a security guard. He moved as a cleaner. Right now, he's a big boy. So for me, teaching the kids discipline, it, it is not the macho type of discipline, the soft skill discipline. I have 10 kids. I never say stop twice. Because the second stop, you receive some lashes. <laughs> you see? And it never happened. It worked for me. It might not work for somebody else. My luck is um, uh, I have great wives. Today is Father's Day, so I don't want to talk about my wives. <laughs> it is our day. Let's for oh, once. Let, let, <laughs> let, <laughs> let, <laughs> let, <laughs> let, 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 Afro, <laughs> Afro, 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 they make us fathers. Yeah, they they make us fathers. Make us. You know, I'll tell you an interesting story about my house. But before, I, before, I, then, I, be, before then, not, uh, yeah. though we can never understand women, yeah. but women are the greatest thing God ever gave to man. Yeah, Agreed. yeah, yeah. I mean, no matter what you... Hallelujah! <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, so many fathers here headlining are the host, Dr. Daniel Macaulay, Mr. Charles Mensah, and Mr. Senor Hosi. These are all known names and faces with different um, skill sets and different areas of operation and endeavor who are impacting our society in a very wonderful way. So behind me are a pack of gentlemen as well who are also uh, shining the light in their respective corners and adding to the development agenda of our nation. And most importantly, are playing roles as fathers. They have their challenges, just like you and I, and they also have their own uh, you know, mindsets. Uh, there's, there's quite a number of my friends who've joined us. Uh, I've seen Professor Abochi. I've seen uh, Fifi Folson. Uh, Fifi Folson is a fancy man. You see, see him present on radio. He speaks some nice English. And he likes to share pizza a lot, you know? <laughs> Shares pizza to his, you know. And I saw Kwekuche Ofori. Kwekuche Ofori. And when we come to you, George, I'm, 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 I'm expecting to hear the conversations about cross-culture, you know, children who've experienced life out there, outside of Ghana, and have to come here and have to, you know, switch and come and live the life here, yeah. or parents who have had to live their lives there and come to switch here and train children here, how that whole mix goes. So... Um, you, congratulations. The kids are turning out really well. Uh, they look very beautiful on the, oh, the thank phone you very screen. Much. Yeah, thank yeah, you yeah, very much. Sure. Uh, yeah, they don't look like me, but we we'll think <laughs> like <laughs> So, uh, George Quay uh, is going to have a conversation with uh, the many fathers here who have interesting thoughts to share with us. You want to give it up to uh, the man, George Quay, the host of Late Night Express on Joy 99.7 FM and also Showbiz A to Z. Uh, he hosted Showbiz A to Z yesterday, Saturday. Um, take it over, George. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. And Doc, Urado, thank you very much. Um, I mean, for some of us, the Eagle is a playground. Um, if yeah. you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm trying to sit like the way Nat sat, you know, when he was talking. Okay. Yeah, the height is not, but, but, but. Well, we're men, and today is our day, so let's not speak about height. My brother Coleman is also here, yeah, as short as myself. Uh -huh. Charlie, how are you doing, my brother? Oh, dressy. <laughs> <laughs> Coleman, you dress. Father's Day small. No, you wear gold shirts. Give it up for my man, Coleman. <laughs> 
This is the man responsible for the finest astroturfs you see in GH, and soon he's going to be conquering West Africa and the rest of Africa. Yeah. Give it up for him again. Thank you very much. That's what we're talking about. And um, I'm also honored to say that Nana Udiasa, Africa's most useless dancer, is right behind me. <laughs> I got confirmed. I got confirmed. <laughs> Yo, 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 yo. The real nation is here. Now, um, I mean, it's really great. Congratulations to Team Multimedia for this initiative. I remember when I stepped out of the school. Um, there's only one school in Ghana, by the way. We can't go into that debate now. That's Fanspam, for those who don't know. And I wanted to do tertiary. I remember I picked Nafti forms and told my father, the late Emmanuel Kwe, that oh, that minta my Nafti, can you imagine Nafti? Said oh, National Film and Television Institute. Said we do have a concert. <laughs> I said oh no no no, I want to go and learn how to produce and direct films. I said, oh, me minta no ya legon, University of Ghana. I said, oh no dad no, I want to go to Nafti. I said, no problem, go to Nafti, pay your fees. In other words, you want to go to Nafti, I don't have a problem but go and pay your fees. This morning, I want us to have a conversation about the role fathers play in the education of their children. I mean, what kind of stance do you take? How important is it the choices they make, not just about the schools they choose, even later on the career path and all those things, because the decision I was going to make by going to NAFTA, even if I'd gone to NAFTA, I'd still be here today, because eventually, that is still what I want to do Anyway, so for our great fathers over here, and I heard Mr. Charles Mensah say, taking them to school, uh, Senyo, you do it once every three years, eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, few, three times in a term. Oh, okay. You, know, okay. you should be careful. What, remember what he said. Uh, he said because he, his, his workplace oh was in the same area. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, those of us who have to do U10, <laughs> our tree is more valuable. <laughs> Contextualize the thing. Yeah, well, it's, but, you know, it's a I right little, little note on the women's matter. Mm. Yeah. On Father's Day, yeah. my, mother, my wife tells me uh. it's because of her that I'm a father. So I have to celebrate her on Father's Day. <laughs> Which is true. Ooh. On my birthday, my mother true. calls me to tell me me in football. It was me of your army. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, they dominate. So when is it my day? Uh, don't worry. <laughs> when you die, we'll celebrate you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me start. Doc, I like the way you've given your children the sports, the discipline, and everything. And I like what you said about corporal punishment. Um, I, my dad never touched me. I remember my mom lashed me once. For a crime, I later on realized I didn't commit. Later? Yes. At that time, I didn't know what it was. They said we had gone to play mommy and daddy. And somebody came to chook. And I got some four lashes. Later on, I realized it was just a hug. Manyashi. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Eh? Manyashi. No, I'm not great. You know, so, um, Doc, first... I mean, how significant is the decision uh, making when it comes to education and the, the concept of corporal punishment? How do you, you know, let's take the education part first. How significant is it? How important is it for you when it comes to choosing which school to go to, even what courses to decide to learn and all that? For me, I don't have too much preference on schools. The home is the most important thing. I would want my child to go to Saito to have a teacher in the house to teach that child. School education is very important. At times we think of these big, big, big schools and you, your child rather go and go and learn some bad things. Yep. Forgive me that I'm being straightforward. That's right. I try to watch my child's attitude at home more. I watch my children's friends, and I talk to my children a lot. When it comes to education, you can ask all my friends, any time I walk to my home, my kids walk to me and hug me, but I lash them. 
Well, after lashing you, I tell you, I love you. That's why I'm doing that. Exactly. You see, spare the rod and spoil the, the child. child. It's biblical. My mom, what I went through that had made me what I am today, I won't change it. <laughs> My mom can follow me to school and lash me in front wow. of assembly. Wow. Before we we'll sing the pledge and march, <laughs> <laughs> and march to the classrooms. And it molded me. Can you be a Jimmy? Mm. Just and like myself. Mm. You see, we, 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 we are becoming different parents with some poly styles, we, and we have to be very careful about that. Your child is doing the wrong thing. I visited a friend, and a child came from school. The mother called the child three times. The child is uh, holding a granite. And the child thought the mother was stressing her. Wow. And him is a boy. And he threw the granite on the, on the floor. Okay. This is a crime. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crime in my house. What do you You will be hung. <laughs> <laughs> And you see, and these parents was like, oh, Fifi, oh, Fifi, you know? Wow. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm it's not it's saying I'm a perfect father, but this is a crime in my home. You will be hung. <laughs> you see? And we as fathers, we have to take certain things serious. Though in my homes, my wife thinks they have, they own the kids more than me. I think most of you experience that. When your father come home and you are even given instruction, your wives feel they have more authority. True. Which is true. True. But you see, the father figure, at the same time, when the wrong is being done, the same wife will call you and tell you 5 a.m. So those things are very, very important. Your relationship with your wife and training your kids because the kids are always with her. You come in as a disciplinarian, the same loving father, and have that kind of love around them, and set competition within them. And don't be a super father. I disappoint my kids. My wife tell me that you don't have to disappoint your children. I said, I disappoint them now. If they go and fall in love and a man disappointed, so oh, daddy, this one is normal. We are used to it. No broken heart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very practical father yeah. because I want to have more kids. I take them through the regiment of life. And that is what I do for my children. So, I don't treat them any special. They walk, they wash. You come to my I don't have I don't have house helps in my house, those who know me. Yeah. You come to my house, my kids are cleaning, washing, doing the laundry. I'm not coming from any, uh, I'm not a Dada B, I'm a Java. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, yeah, from Labadi. Okay. So, how do you want me to train my children? Solid, solid, solid. Mr. Um, <coughs> Mesa. The, 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 the point about Fifi throwing the tantrums, the granite, yeah. maybe. It could have been influenced by what is seen parents, the do parents do. Because when daddy and mommy are quarreling and arguing in presence of Fifi, and things are like, but okay, I don't like. Fifi could have picked it and feel that this that is, is the, the way of life. I like dog's position, that it's a crime, which means that that attitude doesn't go in his house. So the kids will learn out of it. So sometimes, when you and a wife have argument, when you are talking on the phone and it's debate and it's going to resort to insult, please avoid that conversation in presence of them. Because they think that it's normal. You might think that, oh, don't mind, I was talking to you. No. They learn out of that. Trust me. I've experienced it. I've experienced it. I mean, my first born will be 27 in no time, but the last born is 16, 17. So I've started it. So I've experienced it. Never have a debate or argument in presence of the kids. Our wives, yes, will fight, will argue, will do things, but avoid doing it in presence of the kids. Else, by the time 
you get a visitor. That's what the attitude will show. Mm -hmm. And they will leave your home and go and spread it to somebody else. Yeah. On the point of education, in my house, I'm the final authority, authority when it comes to education. Yes, you all would debate. Should we clap like, for you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I pay the fees. Exactly. <laughs> you can't determine that you go to, let's say, for the sake of argument, a school in uh, GIS, when what I, I can afford is Bishop Boys School. Exactly. So that's why I take the final decision. It's very important. We can argument that, like doctor said, you can argument that with you teaching or a teacher teaching. Because affordability is key. Very important. You can't take your kid to school when every time they are going on holiday abroad and you can't afford the afford holiday. It. Mm -hmm. it demoralizes the kid. So take the kid to a place that you have full control financially and support it with part-time teachers and things. That you have full control. Don't take the kid to school because your colleague at work, whose husband or whose wife is rich or inheritance, and they are taking a kid to school and you are forcing to. Almost every now and then, when a kid comes home and you look at the work, uh, compared to the fees that you've paid, hey, if it is guy. <laughs> don't, don't weaken their confidence. Yeah. So please avoid. Those little, little things. But on the again, uh, again, what um, my senior is saying, we fathers must be very careful. Sure. Never be an opportunist. Yes. A lot of fathers are opportunists. Yeah. Don't go and marry and have more kids and think your wife should use her money to support, to support you. you. You are the father. You're supposed to be a responsible man. And that makes you a father. Today is Father's Day. Let's talk about ourselves, and we have to be seen responsible. As he said, if I'll add a little, you don't go and put your child in the school and be looking at your wife's salary. Your wife's salary is her salary. Don't come home and fight your wife because she can afford to pay the fees. Even if she's paying the fees, try to take it over. You are the man. Be, be seen to be very responsible. I'm very particular about that. Because a lot of fathers lately are marrying because they want women to pay their bills. <laughs> Don't be a man that a woman pay your bills. Thank you. Senor, I mean, I've heard everything that has been said. But in this day and age where it appears if your child does not attend any of these A-League schools or something, your child does not belong... I'm hearing Dr. Macaulay, I'm hearing Mr. Charles Mensah, and I'm wondering that how, how do we as fathers approach it? I don't think there's any real right or wrong answer around this. It's about what is sustainable and works. It is not out of place as a father to kill yourself or your children. It's not. But you don't need to die. Because if you die, the children cannot live. You know, see, you can attempt to kill, but make sure you don't die. In my home, it's a different game, a bit different from my big brothers. My money is our money. Everybody's money is everybody's money. On the issue of school, your, what you want to achieve ultimately is to empower your children to thrive. It doesn't matter what method. I'm a Saito man. But the truth is, I won't take my child to Saito today. Saito taught me certain great things. My question is, can I teach my children those great things without going to Saito? Saito also failed to teach me certain things, which I think other schools could have taught me. I go to a lot of meetings today. I hardly see my classmates. As a matter of fact, I haven't seen any of my Saito classmates in any major big meeting I've had. So I can't become the definition of a norm. What we want to give our children is the best opportunity to succeed. With, with what you are saying, yeah. I believe Saito is still a great school. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I'll, I'll come there. It's still a great school. 
Don't discourage parents to take their children in taking their children to Saito. Yes, because I started by saying that at home, everything starts from the home. And, okay, so that's why I said there are things you have to, you can get there. Mm -hmm. So the question is whether you can deliver it, what is missing elsewhere. Mm -hmm. mm, interesting. That's, that's, that's where it is. What you want to achieve is I want to capacitate my child with skills to thrive, win, excel, and optimize their potential. So, what I'm getting one thing from what you are all saying that affordability is key. Yeah. And no, what Doc is saying, hold on, hold on. But in affordability, there is sustainability. Yeah. If you can afford it, you may be able to sustain, sustain it. it. Yeah. May be able to. I, I but what want, Doc is saying is that you buttress it and make it stronger with whom? Yeah. Tuition. There's not a bigger or better. Right? So if your pocket can afford Kotobabi 5 primary or La uh, 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 LA basic, afford that. However, don't discount the influence of the home. Let me, the, let yes. me say something. This is the biggest. We are talking about bringing up a child yes. as a father. That's a basic thing whilst we are all gathered here. Very well. And we shouldn't lose sight of bringing children up depend on we the fathers. For me, school is very important. Exactly. But the attitude you instill into a child. Look, why are at times the brilliant students don't get to the top? There are certain values, values you, you put into a child. That is what we should discuss as fathers. For me, let's, let me downplay school a bit. As a father, what is your role? Because you are not a teacher in the school. Mm -hmm. the, the best you can do is to drive your child to the school three times in a term. <laughs> 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 that is the best you can do. But what is significant as a father figure in a child life? It, it, it's come in so many ways. Uh, my senior here says something. Our children, he also says something. Uh, what we are. I can read myself in my children. Exactly. I can read both the girls and the boys. I can read my, myself in them. Right now, I have teenage adult children, girls. And they thought I can, I can listen to them when they are low. I have some recorder somewhere. Hey. When, when they are talking, Confessions. When they are talking, you can see that. The men they even want to, want to choose, they're looking at me. Exactly. They're looking at me as a father. I want somebody like this. This is like my father type, this, this, this. Right. So we as a father, how do we present ourselves in the home? How you treat your wife tells who you are. Mm. Mm. But everybody, how you treat your mother first tells how you can treat your, treat wife. your wife. Yes. And children grow to, to pick a lot from that. So never underestimate a child watching on at home. For me, the school, the school there is a standard. It will do its part. Like, like you're going to buy a car. ABS in every car now is standard. You don't go request another ABS. Automatic brake system. So let's all as fathers see school as standard. Somebody will have home tuition for the child. He will come out to be the best. Somebody will take the child to Saito. We'll that the child will come out to be the best. Yeah. Somebody will take the child... To the, to the most expensive school in Ghana, and the child will still come out to be the best. So for me, it's not about the school. Once you go on, my thing about school is confidence and relationship. True. I have a son. I don't pay his school fees. He's in the university second year. Because he come to work vacation and pay his own fees. One day, I was sitting down with the mother, and that time he was 16. And the mother went to shop. He, and he said, works with you, you mean? He worked with me, yeah. yeah. And, and the mother went to shop for, for my son, I think 15, 16. I saw the jeans trousers. I said, this is for who? This is for me. 
<laughs> are you still shopping for your son, mm -hmm. who is 16 years? Let's check his bank account. That's right. His one whole year salary is inside there. And I say, from today, you pay the water bill in the house. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It is not punishment. But this is the way I train my children. So he's still paying. So I asked that he should pay 20% of the housekeeping money. The mother said no. So okay, you are one here, but he paid the water bills. Exactly. So he's paying the water bills while he's in school because he's making money. This is a training we have to be giving our children. School is very, very important. Because if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. Exactly. You will end up paying more. But mothers are the best teachers and the best schools that God had ever created. Mothers. I think Doc deserves a big you. hand for that. Yes. <laughs> I think Doc deserves a big hand for that. This, I mean, no. this is solid. Anybody has a question? Uh, 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 yes. Uh, oh, there's a question here. Okay. Uh, it's, it's not you either. Okay. <laughs> you, you do have a contribution. Okay. Um, let, me, let me quickly move over there. Before, okay. Yes. There's a microphone there. Right. Thank you very much, George. Yes. I, I would want to agree entirely with what Doc said when right. it comes to the school conversation. Uh, and I, was, I will agree with him again when he says, let's play the devil's advocate and let's downplay school. Mm -hmm. Home is everything. Yeah. At school, what is a child going to do? He's going to listen to what a child is going to say. He needs attention. Who creates that attention for the child? Don't, don't get me wrong. I don't mean school in terms of the classroom and the teacher. I mean school in classes of school. Mm -hmm. Saito, no, I mean, GIS, I, I agree and with, all the rest. I agree with everything you have said. Yes. I'm only supporting what you have said by saying that yes. at home, we help develop attention span for the child. Yes. And that is how the child will succeed whichever school he or she goes to, whether Saito, whether uh, GIS, wherever. Language is developed from home. Every other thing else is developed from home. So... What happens at home, at the home level, is very, very important when it comes to the whole conversation about the... About uh, the, about the all right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Solid. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. Solid. I, I uh, no, uh, Mr. Uh, um, no, Mensah wanted to come in. Then I'll, I'll come to you shortly, Senor. Yes. George, in all this conversation, there's one key thing that we haven't mentioned. Yeah. The impact of social media on our children. Uh -huh. <laughs> what it is is that when you have a conversation with your child and they have a phone. The next minute, when they step out into their rooms, they are communicating with about 80,000 people. The rest of the world. Now, sometimes what you teach or what you tell your child, he or she Googles it, he finds a counter to what you are saying. And it gets endorsed by a friend. So before you would realize the child is going that way against your discussion. It's all because of the impact of social media. So one of the things that I did at the beginning, I disguised myself and became a friend in my kids' social media platforms. Okay. I mean, now they've grown. If they like, they can kill me. Mark, mark. <laughs> <laughs> but I disguised myself, and I was chatting and doing everything like them. I shaping it. It's me. But on the platform that they were, it wasn't me. It was some nicknames that this, things said. Yeah. And that's why I was able also to learn what is happening out there. So the young fathers find a way to be part of the social media aspect of your children. At this point, we are going to hand over to the man who was there when the golden stool was commanded from the sky. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our own ancestor, Mr. Winston Amoa. A big hand for Winston. Abuaji. Do I need to pour libation before you start talking? <laughs> well, we don't use any colored stuff to pour libation. So you cannot attempt to do that, uh, you know, offer libation uh, oh. with that one. Uh, thank you very much, uh, George Kui. I have a very simple task. You know, but I keep hearing the men reminding themselves that it's our day, it's our day, it's our day. 
and the fact that our wives say they made us fathers. Who made them mothers? His fathers. Exactly. You know, why are we trying so hard to celebrate ourselves? We made them mothers. So if they are celebrating, we are the reason why they are celebrating. <laughs> Unfortunately for us, when it gets to our turn, we have to celebrate ourselves. But that's just another conversation for another day. So I've been listening to all of you talk about, um, you know, uh, if you can afford, if you can't afford, and what you must do, the sustainability and all of that, all that boils down to one simple matter, money. Some say money answereth all nonsense. But today I just want to find out one thing. What role does money play in making you a responsible or a good father? Charles Benson, tell me, what role does money play in making you a responsible or a good father? The, the reason being that, look, yes, you can teach them the values, you can teach them everything, but values cannot bring kinky home. So if you don't push them into an area where if you're going to earn money, you must work. If you're going to work, you must do X, Y, Z, provide solutions, like a doctor said at the beginning. And therefore, when you don't have money, you're in trouble. You have too much of it, you can be in trouble. So what it is is that because too much of it, I've seen people, my colleagues, sell their houses to solve a problem. So when they sold the house, they had a lot of money and they were in trouble because the managing of those monies. So money and the management of it, so MM, it plays a serious role in upbringing of our children and indeed marriage. When you don't have money, you don't even have the confidence to speak to your children. Because they brought a request and you don't have the money and you don't even know, know where it's going to come from. So all you resort to is that Nyame Beye. Nyame Beye based on what? So we must strive hard to work hard Look, Winston, as you sit there, if there's some 2,000 Ghana CD in your pocket, <laughs> and 20 CD in your pocket, you see the change in the attitude. <laughs> You're laughing, but that's the reality. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I like the point you make. Uh, one day, my wife's grandmother, after several attempts to see me, saw me and said, Ma and I said, oh, oya na me shiska. The fact that you will see with you, or my menu, the mere fact that there's money at home is enough reason to make her happy. Sanyo, let me get to you and get your thoughts on this whole idea of money and its impact on you becoming a responsible or a good father. Your responsibility as a father is to protect the house, the home, the family. You are a leader. The family must sustain. Hmm. In our world, we need resources to sustain. And to access some, you need money. But money doesn't define my place as a father in my home. Okay. In my home, money is not everything. We started with nothing as a family unit. And we try to live within our means in ways that are sustainable. If I don't have money in my personal pocket, as long as there's enough wealth within our family to sustain us, we are happy to keep thriving. The problem is if, as a family, you don't have money, you struggle with feeding yourselves, you struggle with meeting your basic needs but, and sustaining the, the, your the lifestyle. Family's, the family's wealth yeah. would start from some money. No, of course. Mm -hmm. So like I'm saying today, I may be relatively more productive, but I think if I, as I see it, I think my wife is even becoming more productive than myself, economically. I mean, because you've laid the foundation. Of course. Remember, when I got married, she had a salary that was higher than mine. And I never forget that. She loved me for who I was. <laughs> Let's get to Dr. Macaulay. And I want to find out the same thing from you. And also look at um, certain avenues for those men who are probably thinking, I may not have this, I may, not, I may not have money now, but how do I get 
money so I can become the responsible and good father that Charles Mensah talks about. He says 100%, you need money under the current dispensation. Um, I, have, I have seen it all. I grew up with nothing. But when we talk about fatherhood, who is the father? The father is the head of the family. The father is everything. And when you want to talk about money in marriage for a man, money gives you authority. Never, never rule out that. Money as a man in a marriage gives you authority. Women are not to be understood, but they are, not, they are to be respected and cared for. Once you do that, your family mustn't lack. And every man must take that very seriously. My mother will tell you, Kafan, Aklo, Aloa, Fan, Kakla, no more chichi me a ketchup. No chichi me a ketchup. When the dagger is being pulled and you want to stab, it's a man's chest. You stab that dagger. And that is all about life. So you, the man, must, must, must have that authority. If you have that authority and you have discipline of life, you have a better family. Okay. And all have, make your money and let your wife, your wife spend it for you. Mm. But what you do is... Once in a while, you go home and run the home like a military camp. Mm. You know why you do that? Tell me. You have to be humble, even in the home. Your, our wives are the interior ministers. I call them interior ministers. They are smarter than us. But again, at times, you control what you take home. Okay. Not the fact that you are working hard, making a lot of money, that every time you walk into a, your kitchen as a man, you have spoiled food on the table. In my home, there are no spoiled food. I don't put food in the dustbin because I remember my roots. Okay. Thank you very, very much, uh, Dr. Daniel Macaulay. Thank you very much, Charles Manson. And thank you very much, Senor Osi. And, you know, you ended on your money must work for you. But in order for your money to work for you, you must stay healthy to enjoy your money working for you. Israel Ali is up next. He'll be finding out how we can stay healthy so that above all, our monies would work for us. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, um, Winston. And um, let's come back to the bit about being healthy or what we do to remain healthy or stay healthy so that we can continue to earn and take care of the family. So I want to come to you, Senor. How do you do it? I know he has a gym. The man has a six pack. Me have one pack with wings. Then you are coming to me. What is that? But how do you do it? Or what is it that you're doing to stay healthy? For me, it's it's my food. I'm not a big eater, so I'm quite light on carbs. Um, largely, um, I used to be an active walker and um, a bit of a jogger possibly doing anything between 10 to 22K a day. Okay. All right. I, I stopped. So you see me as, but in the last week, I've, I've got him back. We definitely need to survive for our kids. Yeah. We must always keep that in mind. And I'm trying to create a lot more balance in my, in my, in my life. In the early stages of your life, it's just you and your, your wife. It's going to take you maybe three, four, five years before the child needs their own room. So you start with a bed sitter. After a while, you can decide to rent that bed sitter and acquire something else or even expand where you are. So it's, it's something that we should... It, it is you and Nathaniel. You are the people causing problems in this country. <laughs> why, why do you put wear the shoes that look like salaries? <laughs> then everybody wants to wear their shoes on. Let me come to Dr. Macaulay. So... <laughs> We're still talking about <laughs> having this kind of healthy lifestyle yeah. that would ensure that you live around long enough to continue to take care of your children. Well, with me, I take it very simple. 
It's easy. It's really not too much of the exercise, but it's a diet. I have gyms in all my homes. I have tennis courts all around. I go for walking, but diet. Men are getting one pack because of diet. I eat once a day. In the morning when I'm moving, I just do my uh, bitter cocoa in the flax. I drink, I eat around two, three till the next morning. If I'm craving too much, I eat banana in the evening. And I want men to start practicing it. You have to keep healthy. And what destroys you is your diet. The way you eat your heavy banku oil, oily food, big meat and all those things. Yeah, coma, you are right. You understand? The, you know, you, you, you have to do all these things. Once in a while, I break all the rules. Once in a while, I break, I break all the rules. I eat heavy, I can't even breathe. But eating, eating in moderation is the best and what you pick. Exercise, you train the heart and also do regular uh, medical checkup. Yep. Don't think you are slim as a man. You have to live for your children. You are the life of your children. And as a father, you live for your children. If today you drop dead, I can see young men having strokes and all that. Their cholesterol level too high and all that. I drag my friends behind me for us to do some kind of healthy kind of living. I will fight you if you don't live the right uh, healthy life. And you see, um, I don't agree with uh, all of you <laughs> for saying that uh, it's good to start moderate, modest, have, have a modest life, but you need to have a kind of fighting spirit to reach the top. Yes. We, the young men of these days, we are too relaxed. We are too content. We are too lazy. You want to marry a beautiful woman, have beautiful children, drive your cars, but yet you don't want to work hard. Take that mentality off your head. Work hard. Compete. There's nothing wrong competing, but do it with integrity. You don't go jumping and trying to acquire wealth that you, you haven't reached. I have done that, and it had worked for me. I slept, I slept only four hours for a very long time now. It had become part of me. I can't sleep after, after four o'clock. As a man who is fathering many kids, I need to leave. Stress is it's not part of me. You see young men, you young men, young fathers, you'll be working and say, oh, I'm going on leave. Leave to go and do what? You're going on leave. I'm tired. I'm stressed. Stressed for what? What, is, what are you stressed about? Is it your girlfriend giving you stress or your family giving you stress? Work and take care of your family. For me, in my, my, my growing up, there's nothing like stress. Stress is a mental, it's a mental thing. But, but Magdan, you've been distressing a lot. You, you play tennis and you enjoy having tennis. This where we are right now. It's your distressing unit. It's a stress reliever. You know, <laughs> I have a nice... Yeah, like that can be a moon, but... <laughs> <laughs> Magdan, you are the best man in the house. Yeah, I'm not the best man in the house. But I am the best man in the house. So, 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 so obviously, <laughs> you, 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 have, you, have the, you have the strategy. Thank you. Yeah, you, you, you have, have the strategy which is working for you. Is his sports active? And he also creates a social environment for himself. Yeah. yeah. You understand? And that's how he distresses. Yeah. <laughs> what this man carries, and he's still sitting here talking cold and cold and cold. <laughs> Grab my brother. <laughs> but I agree with you, man. Leave him here. <laughs> I, think, I think what he's saying is that we should try to make the fun a part of the work. Let me come to... I have uh, a strategy. Yeah, yeah, you have a strategy. Yeah. Let me come to Charles, Charles Mensah. You've already indicated that for you, before you get into the house, you de-stress. So that you don't take the stress onto the people in the house. But I also know that you play tennis quite, quite a bit. I don't play tennis. I actually play golf these days. Oh, okay. Um, what it is is that, is the this thing... It's not cheap. Very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
what? <laughs> I've worked so hard. I used to jog. I used to do goalkeeping. You know, I used to do a lot of boxing at each stage in my life. Now I'm eating 60. So I decided to slow down. After work, if I don't play golf, I play golf three, four times a week. And when I'm playing golf, 18 holes, you walk. You network. And you talk. After that, you have a small wizzo of you. <laughs> Those who know the code, it's code. So, ultra wizzo of you. Then you go and relax and read. You can't do the wizzo, the golf, when you are young. It is the stage in my life. So if I'm inspiring somebody and you don't get closer, you think that I just arrived at that place and therefore you want to be there. When you leapfrog, you break your leg. So I think you must have a plan according to each stage in your life. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Charles. And uh, before I hand over to the next um, gentleman who's going to be speaking with us. I want to bring in Dr. Safo. He's a drive doctor, and uh, it's because we're talking about health. One of the conversations we're having uh, at breakfast this morning was the fact that BP, blood pressure, is killing a number of people, and it's because they are not um, taking good care of themselves or, or checking to even know that they have blood, high blood pressure. I would want you to say a few uh, words on that before. Right, so um, great points by all the great fathers here. I think it was last week or last two weeks I was having conversations with both Lexis, Winston, and then Kojo about strokes and then high blood pressure um, in Ghana. And if you look at the statistics right now, Israel is not good. Between 30 and then the 50 year age group, you've got a lot of people in there, and that's us, young fathers. And we talked about some of the risk factors. You guys mentioned some of it, stress was one of the 10 risk factors that were assessed in a, in, a, in a study, all right? So I'm happy we're talking about stress and distressing different ways. Everybody's got their own way of distressing. So hypertension was number one. Lexus will dance. Yeah. <laughs> Udiasa. No, that one, he does it to distress us. So does, <laughs> it, somebody's really distressing. <laughs> right, so hypertension was one of the major risk factors for development of strokes, especially in young people. So um, most of us walk around and we think we are fine. We feel fine. And then somebody drops and then it's always You know, we have that in our mindset that something other than what meets the eye accounted for it. But Israel, we're talking about measuring your blood pressure. So I remember we asked the question, how many of you know what your regular blood pressure is? Just checking, it's a very simple way of, of doing it. You get a right machine, and then you apply it properly, and then it gives you a reading. So most people have blood pressure cuffs or machines at home. But we talked about getting the right type of blood pressure machine. It must be validated, so you just look at the bottom. There is a sticker, a label there. You must see the CE mark or the FDA mark on it. That validates it as a good blood pressure machine. But Israel, most importantly, we talked about calibration. People use it for three years, four years, but you need to send it to the Ghana Sanas Authority Calibration Unit for them to make sure that it is reading right. Oh, I so I get calls and then people say, oh, doctor, my blood pressure was 160, 110, and most of the time I'm not able to give you a direct answer and it's not because I don't want to do telephone conversation, but it's simply because I do not know whether or not the blood pressure machine has been properly calibrated. So just walk to Ghana Sanas Authority. They've got a calibration unit. Then they'll put a sticker on it. And I'm sure Stenio is very familiar with it because the uh, filling stations, uh, they, are, yeah. they demand for, the, uh, for it to be calibrated right. and then they'll put the GSA sticker on it. Same for all measuring devices, weighing scales, blood pressure monitors, and then glucometers. Right. You need to do the same. So just get that, do it, check your blood pressure, correctly, regularly, or make sure you have a family physician to do that. So I like the point uh, Magdan made about regular medical checkups. It's very important. All right. Uh, Thank what, you very much, What, what the things that Magdan and I wanted to say, but we're contemplating who should say it. Uh -huh. Maybe we should say it together. No, you uh -huh. say it. No, you say it. You have to But you're that. the senior. Oh. How go do I? If you think I'm coaching Okay, you. so he says, as you say that. 
Oh, he says that we should say that. Yes. One of the key things that men must take seriously is their sex life. <laughs> okay. You must have good sex. Okay. To distress yourself. Please, I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, that's an indication of the people on retirement. <laughs> I'm, I'm, for no. starters, a drug doctor is here. Wait, 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 with your wife. Uh huh. <laughs> with your That's wife. That's what we are saying, with your wife. With your wife. With your wife. No supporting artist. <laughs> no, so, no supporting artist. <laughs> yeah. No, that's an option. Only two. You know, if but, you can afford. No, look. I mean, we are joking with this matter, but it's a very, very serious matter. Well, yeah. At a certain stage, you realize how critical this thing becomes. We start from being 16, and at the point you become, and then at, a, at a, around 40, you start going back to 16. But somehow, the spouses don't relate. And there's chaos, which adds to the stress. And I think, do, drive doctor, that's what you should be discussing more seriously. Okay, so the I guess- The DSA, we know where it is. The, the next time, <laughs> you should take it up as the next topic yeah. with Lexis yeah. Bill. Sorry, but before Lexis Bill married. comes in, Lexis yeah. Bill says he wants a song to be played. We're talking about stress. He wants a song to be played for him so that he can, you know, showcase his skills. Look, 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 look. Be before, <laughs> before he actually gets to speak. Israel, Israel is setting me up here. <laughs> but guys, I mean, put your hands together for our resource person. Thank you so much, Israel. I, I am totally blown away. Totally. Listen, I know these men, they inspire us from afar, from near, but today I've gotten to learn so much more, and I'm sure you watching us as well, you've learned a lot more. And, and, and my guests here as well, have we learned something good? Yeah. Was it good? Put your hands together for them. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, we've, we've covered literally everything, and I'm sure if you are a father today, you'll be very proud, and you probably have a few more nuggets that you can use to become a better father. And I, I just want to find out from our friends here who've joined uh, the other real daddies here if they've learned something or what they've taken out of our conversations today. So let me start off from here. But brother, how are you doing? I'm good. And what's your name? Kay. Kay, talk to me. How has this morning been? Yeah. Okay, Israel. How has it been? What are your takeouts? What, what did you pick from this conversation today? Okay. Um let me let me let me um, say a very big thank you for um, the opportunity. Um, be daddy, be present. We were discussing earlier on that the concept alone, it's um, so so deep that for a daddy to be present in the life of a child, it means a lot. My brother, what's your name? I'm Kweku. Kweku, talk to yes. me. It's been a good morning, hasn't it? It has been. It All has right. Been. So, uh, what's your take out? For me, it's the be present conversation, and that has always been my watchword, because, like I said in my uh, be daddy code, I said, as a father, you are an ink in the life of the child. The deeper you are, the better it is for you, and then for your child eventually. So, it's it's this this meeting here, this gathering here, for me, it's it's everything that I would. I mean. Wow, good stuff. Thank you so much, Kay. And let me hand over to our brother here. What's your name, bro? I'm Seydou Brahima. Seydou, yeah. talk to me. What right. is that thing you've picked out from today? That thing, in fact, everything my fathers have said is very, very important to me. And I've, in fact, I was, when you can, like, I was trying to judge some things because yeah. everything that they were saying is perfect. And um, some of us like this, uh, where we were coming from, or where we have been, we, James Town boy, living a life, you know, and now the kind of things we are doing for our children, mm. we, ne we never even got time. Fact, not a person. <laughs> wow. not to him, but today, I'm even happy when they were talking about health wise, mm. the gym aspect and stuff. Me, I don't have it. The only thing I do is that when I'm home, hey, let's go. We just go and roam in the town. Mm -hmm. We walk, yeah. we, we talk. When the boy is, is three years, when he's tired, I just speak him. 
I, I just do that so that at least I can also fit them into what I can. Yeah. And I, in fact, I I'm really learning a lot. Put your hands together. I think that's a, that's a very lovely I one. A good product. Yes. British uh, Accra. Let, let me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Chocolate My man, Cole, man. Yes, Shelly, it's yes. been a good morning as well. <laughs> I mean, you're part of the fraternity. I want you to share a few words as well with us. Yes, let me say that one significant thing that I have picked up this morning has to do with what uh, Senor said. A lot of houses or homes, when the man is not there, there's total commotion, lawlessness. And what I have picked this morning has to do with the fact that we need to empower the women in the house so that they will be managers. So it is not as if when daddy is not there, then everything goes hey, why? Hey, why? Yeah. We have to let the, the children know that the, the mothers are managers and they are responsible for the upkeep or for the, 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 the for, for, for managing the house. Beautiful. I think this is a very lovely virtue. I'm so glad that you shared that with us. What's your name, sir? My name is Chris. Chris, yeah. you're welcome. Yeah. Talk to me, Chris. What's that one thing you picked up from here? Yeah, I've learned a lot of things from the conversation that went on. The first thing that I learned is we shouldn't be opportunistic. Doc made reference that they had a family who had a school, but he needed to pay for it, so he took the world to a different school so that he would pay the fees. Secondly, if our spouses are earning more than us, that doesn't mean that their money belongs to us. We have to also work for hours. And the last one that made me happy is we have to give birth to more children with our wife, provided we can take good care of them. That's right. Because the benefits outweigh the, uh, the, the, the negatives, yes. Yes. Dr. Macaulay, this is all your I folks. like that one. I like that one. <laughs> you have, you have over-inspired this young man. <laughs> Thank you. How many, how many kids do you have now? I have just three for now. Hey! <laughs> I wish I have more. He said just three. Oh. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Look, Dr. Macaulay is really your mentor. <laughs> I see just three. You have seven more to go. Yeah. I wish you luck. <laughs> Before he starts, uh, what's your name, brother? Talk to me. My name is Eric. Let's say right. Fankwa. Ah, uh, right. So, yeah. Tell us, bro. Okay, so um, I must commend um, Joy FM for this program. Um, it's the first of its kind. It's really brought some very great fathers together today. And I feel very honored to sit here listen to Doc and the other team members here. In fact, everything they are saying is what I've been reading in books. I've been trying to leave. At least I've done a couple of years, not too bad. I have four kids and still counting. No, no, let's talk for him. Let's, no, no, yeah. no, let's talk for uh, Okay. And, and still uh, counting. Uh, uh, I'm wondering if I'm going to keep counting. You know, I'm now having a different mind uh, thought because of doctor's motivation, you know. <laughs> But you see, with God, all things are possible. You know, it, it tells me um, we are not far from reaching where we've agreed or decided to go in life. Um, parenting, I see it as a calling. And every discussion we've had here this morning has revealed it as very clear. Because you know what the kids are learning from us, from the home, from the mother and father, is way advanced than what they learn in school. Yeah. And as parents, we being the leaders, the gods or the fathers of the home is very critical. Like Doc said, we need to make sure that we are the, 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 the light that everybody in the, in the home sees when they enter. And I believe when we focus and we move on as we've planned here, it's going to take us far. So on this Absolutely. day, I want to thank everybody and congratulate all fathers gathered here and everywhere. God bless us. There you go. Thank you so much. What's thank your name, you. bro? My name is Derek. Derek. Yes, please. Talk and to us. I'd like to thank our leading fathers for taking us through this education. 
Um, I've picked up some points which I've even jotted down, which I'll be reminding myself each day. Uh, well, key among them is the fact that um, being a father is a primary calling. If we see it as a primary calling, we would put in every effort to make sure that we succeed at it. So that's one key thing that I've taken from um, what our father shared with us. The fact that we have to be present and ensure that we instill values such as discipline and hard work in, in the children. And uh, being leaders of, of the family, we have to ensure that we financially will protect the family, make sure that everything is available financially to keep the family going. And the fact that uh, we are providing strategic direction for the family, the future of the family depends on us. So we are working together with all st uh, stakeholders, especially our, our wives, to make sure that we do that for the family. So I'd like Good to thank stuff. the team for um, yeah. that. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. If you can pass the mic to our gentleman in white man. What's the name, sir? And share with us what you take out as well. Um, thank you very much. The name is Kweku Chei Ofori. Um, I think I've picked up a few exciting things there. On the education part, um, I think we've all gone through different stages of education, looking at the panel that we have, but um, as to what you can afford and also the opportunities and the gates that you should open for them. Because for me, I had the opportunity to do the side two aspects of things and also had different educational backgrounds. And I think looking at both of them, they present different opportunities for you. Uh, like my brother senior said, um, he doesn't find anybody on the meeting floors or anything like that based on the site two classmates that he might have, but maybe in a different circumstance, it could have been different. Um, I also listened to what um, doctor said, the home is the place where everything starts and how things are molded. And I think that is one thing that I'm also working away with. Um, one of the things that uh, Mr. Mensa also talked about that excited me is that how um, social media also has an impact. Uh, we cannot, in this day and age, um, shy away from how that plays a role in the molding of the, ch of the child and also in the family. So something that we should also um, take note of. So thank you very much all and I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. I'll come back to my brother, Fifi Folsen, but let me go over to uh, Tofik uh, of Tofmart Technologies. Tofik. Thank you. Um, I would like to thank Joy FM for giving us this opportunity and um, what I picked from this encounter today is um, all our three fathers um, coaching us here has shown that they've been part and parcel of their kids' life. And um, that is one thing I personally couldn't get from my dad in terms of he being there for us and he being responsible as a father. And um, I want to change that. And um, in doing so, I would like to be with them and I have this simple code, which is, my mom took care of us as if my dad was no more. And it's, it's my time to also take care of my kids as if my wife is no more. So, so that they will also get what I couldn't get from my parents. Wow, that's, that's beautiful. You actually epitomize our theme for this year, be daddy, be present. One of our very good friends that we never got to hear from. I'm so happy that he's here. And we will get to hear from him as well. Ladies and gentlemen, please, a round of applause for the Dean of the UPSA Law School and managing partner of Axis Legal, <laughs> Professor Kofi Abochi. Yeah. <laughs> we, we need to hear from him as well. I'm sure he has a lot of nuggets to share. I don't know. I've, I think so much has been said. There is very little to add. So. Congratulations to the very impressive panel. They've, they've said, oh, they've, been, they've been able to also show the work-life balance that they are not only successful on the streets, but they are actually successful at home. Um, I would just like to add that we should all try to be the fathers we never had. And we should also be the examples that we lack. For the fathers we never had, many people have had very bad fathers. Today, many people are good fathers because they had bad fathers. And sometimes the best way to learn is to have the opposite. Because the opposite provides you an opportunity to know how it feels like to be on the other side. And so we should all try to be the fathers we never had. And also try to be an example we lack. The example we lack because the country is made up of families. And we are not happy with the state of our country. And so what it means is that we can all create the next generation of children 
the corrupt person of today was a child of yesteryears. And so we should see in our children the people we are, we are going to make tomorrow, which is where we are today. And so I would like to congratulate all. I think it's been an exemplary uh, panel, and um, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Now, Ibi, if you can kindly pass the microphone to my lawyer for me. Uh, lawyer Daniel Imadi, uh, he's also a great father, and I'm sure he's enjoyed his time here. Daniel. I think... <clears throat> Kudos to Joy FM and the multimedia. It's, it's high time that men have such a gathering because it's, it's like we've been set up to fail from the beginning. <laughs> so we need to have regular encounters like yeah. this. For me, what I've gotten so far is that there's no one size that fits all. Exactly. And then each of the panel, when you look at them, you realize that each one has his own mindset or own personality yeah. orientation. So your adaptation or your decision to follow what they are saying should be based on whether you identify with any of them. When you listen to them from um, Senor to Doc and then Mr. Mensa, you realize that they exhibit different personalities. Personalities even at work and them at home. So your decision to go this way or that way should be influenced by what you, what you are. And, and today has been fun, actually, listening to each and every one of them, how they also balance their work with their role as fathers. So thank you. Thank you. That's right. Thank you so much. IB, I'm sure you'd also want to share your takeouts, and then Fifi will share his final takeouts, and we'll come to our... Uh, panel. Well, one thing that underlines everything that I've heard is you have to be friends with your kids, understand them to be able to mold them to be who you want them to be. And yes, money is also an authority in the house. Yeah, you should make money. There you, you go. Make money. make money. You should make money. Yeah. You should make money the right way. The Charles the right Mason says it's 100%. Right you should make money the right you way. You need to 100 Next Okay, so Fifi, please pick the microphone and share with us. Fifi Folsom is going to be uh, on air on Sunday mornings, of course. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Happy Father's Day to all the fathers here. Yeah. God bless you. Well, a lot has uh, been said. A lot has been taken. I am going away with the fact that I have to be a holistic father, you know, just be daddy and be there. I picked up a whole lot with regards to, uh, you know, making sure you train your children the way they should go, you know. Uh, a lot of times when we get to, when I look at my father, okay, I won't qualify him as having failed, okay, but I, I think that he failed at a point because there's so many things I look at now, but circumstances definitely were different. Now I look at him, and I think one of the gentlemen here said it. Because he made some mistakes, I am correcting the errors. I've got two girls. I want to be their first boyfriend. They should be able to do everything with me, comfortably. It's working for me. I should be able to make good money, and I like the sound of money, you know, because otherwise somebody else is going to just take them away with money, you know. So make good money, give them the best, what I said, education. And I look at myself right now, and I'm like, oh my gosh. Because of my work schedules, I'm not able to, as it were, eat well because probably I'm eating at the wrong time, exercise well. But Senor said something. I mean, in spite of everything, I got to be there for my kids. I like to walk my girls down the aisle, you know. How am I going to achieve this? It means I must check my health just to be sure that I am healthy, making money, being healthy, and ultimately loving my wife because they need to see that. There's something like that, you know, to grow up with. So, again, thank you all very That's much. Right. Uh, and happy Father's Day. <laughs> I need to also, also say thank you to the drive doctor, Dr. Yao Safo. He's the CEO of Medicas Hospital. And every Wednesday, I spend time with him on air talking about our health and your health. And today, of course, he's reminded us how important it is to make sure our pressure is in check so that we can live longer and be great fathers to our children and see them. And, of course, like Fifi, walk them out. Uh, down the aisle, and that's actually for the girl that is like us. You understand what I mean? Yeah, that's one of the things we dream of. <laughs> Look, it's been a great day. Guys, put your hands together for yourselves. You've been an amazing audience. What we're going to do, what we're going to do finally is that, you know, we, we call it the real daddy codes. 
So our honorable panel here will take turns to give us their final codes. If there's, if you're probably just listening in now, what's that one last thing, the most important thing that we would want to share as their real daddy code? In a line or two, they can wrap it up nicely for us. So I'm going to start off with my brother, Senor Jose. Oh, <laughs> why are you pointing this way? <laughs> well, try to be, oh, why not? <laughs> yes, I, I think, okay. I think Charles really um, the point, the pride of every father is to hand it over the baton when your son invites you or informs you about the engagement coming up. When the main gate is knocked, that somebody has come to ask for your daughter's hand. Whatever you've taught the person is taking it to the next level. So let's teach them well so that when they're taking it to the next level, they are building off what you taught them. And that's my takeaway. Awesome. A round of applause for <laughs> Mr. Charles Mensa. <laughs> Senor Jose would go next. <laughs> Obviously, the youngest father of the lot. One of the things that we must all realizes that the parenting that we, we received is not necessarily the same parenting that would have to hand over to the children that we have today. Times have changed. The culture is modified, but the good values still sustain. And that will need us to be very present to deliver and imbibe right in the children we have today. As fathers, we are not in competition in parenting with our mothers with the mothers of our children. We are a team. And remember that. So Tofik, Tofik, I don't think you should be a father who lives as though their mother never was. No. Children need that balance. You need to be a present father and build and nurture your children as a team. It doesn't matter whether it's a baby mama or your wife present or ex, at all times, that must be done as a team. I have witnessed firsthand what disaster parenting brings without that teamwork. I've seen that in my own home, as in my parents' home. I've seen that in other families. Let that not be your lot. I think we should all remember what Prof. Abuchi, um, Prof. Abuchi Choco Boys. <laughs> That's another side to protege. You know, what he said, let's be the example we never had, and let's also be the fathers we never had. All right. So um, that would be my parting word. A round of applause for Senor Jose. <laughs> The CEO of the Chief of Bulk Oil Distributors. Have a lot of sex. <laughs> yeah, have distress. a lot of sex with your wife. Yes, with your wife. <laughs> with your wife. Now, his story is that of despair, hope, and glory. What he shared today is just a tip of the iceberg. I mean, I read his book, The Path of an Eagle, and it has tons of nuggets. And it's actually one book that you really need to go and get. And you can actually get the full iceberg itself. He's been our host today. And we are so grateful to him. The chairman of the Magdan Group of Companies. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Daniel. Dr. Daniel Macaulay, please. Doc. Well, I have a simple philosophy. As a father, you have to be there. Respect your wife. Never be in competition with your wife in training the children. Be a figure figure, be a father figure, and always be there for your children. Just come home and criticize. Just correct the wrongs. And one last most important thing, get that authority. Be responsible and have that class and control your home. Not as an authoritarian, but control your home with love. But don't forget, respect your wife. Absolutely. <laughs> A round of applause for Dr. Daniel Macaulay. Look, 
This has been a great hangout. The real daddy code hangout on Joy FM and Joy Prime on TV. Happy Father's Day to all fathers out there from us here in the Eagle. It's been a great session. Let me say thanks a lot to our production team uh, led by Gladys, Adam Naite, Philip Nye, my whole crew here. Maoli, the, the guys have been amazing, you know, working hard to put this together to celebrate fathers. My co hosts, of course, Nathaniel Ato, Winston Amwa, Israel Lai, George Koe, Fifi Fosen, IB. Uh, who else is here? Everybody. We've, been, we've had a good time. George Koe, yes, yes. And we're grateful to you as well for checking it out. We hope it's been impactful and you'd actually remember all these nuggets. Yeah? Now, this part of the show is my favorite part where we get to party. Don't you think so? <laughs> Don't you think so? <laughs> Look, yo, yo, real, yo, 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 real yo. daddies know how to dance. <laughs> real daddies know how to dance. So, guys, can you throw? Yeah, yes, I'm talking about dance. What? That's the reason why I'm going to know the answer. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> so, can we have some music? Yes, let's have some music, Mr. Buga. That is uh, <laughs> Doctor Doctor Savage's favorite song. Let's. Oh, that's yeah, really yeah, for real song as well. Yes. Can, can we turn up the music right now? Don't sleep. So we Don't can sleep. show them some Wake moves up. right now. Call yeah. your money. Call yeah. your money. Turn up the music. Wake Let's up. all come together. Let's Call all come together. Call Call hey, come on. Wake up. So you show them, show them something. Hey. Come on. Do any